Hey everyone, and thank you so much for being a part of the growth of this channel over this entire year. In particular, the 73 questions with a blank medical specialty interview series. It has been by far the most successful series on this channel, and I have had so much fun doing it all throughout the year. I've gotten to meet some absolutely incredible, incredible people. And I know without a doubt that the advice these physicians have been giving you guys are inspiring some future dermatologists, neurosurgeons, orthopedic surgeons, you name it. And it just, it brings a smile to my face. As an end of the year, thank you for being a part of this channel and the growth of it. I've created these compilations of the most important advice that I think these physicians have given. The last question I ask in each of those interviews is, what would you say to the aspiring blank physician right now? I've done around 24 to 26 of these interviews in total, and each of them has something very special and unique to say. And I think if you haven't seen all 26 of them, or you're too lazy to, I decided to put them all into a compilation, little present for you at the end of the year. I went through and got the answers of every single one for your viewing pleasure. I have the chapters all linked in the description. So if there's a particular specialty you wanna hear from, you can just jump right to it. But in general, they have some amazing advice for anyone considering a field in medicine in general. It doesn't have to be specifically that specialty. So I hope you enjoy this. I already know it's gonna take a lot of editing from me. So please leave a like and subscribe. Future me is gonna hate doing this, but I know it'll be worth it for you guys. So take it away. What would you say to the aspiring physician right now who's maybe a high schooler looking to be a doctor one day or maybe a college student, um, maybe doubting themselves? At the moment whether or not they can get into med school what would you say to them well um <clears throat> it's a it's a competitive specialty there's a, 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 a competitive uh uh career to get into um so a lot of people that want to become doctors can't because they can't get into medical school don't let that discourage you if you want to be a doctor work towards it but what i would say to people at particularly at the medical school and residency levels um, seek first to understand. That is your primary goal in your learning. Understand what you're doing. Memorization is important in any career. And it's important in medicine as well. But in my opinion, understanding what we do and why we do things is far more important than being able to memorize um, the answer. What would you say to the aspiring physician right now in either high school or college? What I guess the only advice I would have to say is you never know unless you try. Like, for instance, this interview. He never stopped emailing me and now we're doing it. And so I would say the same thing for everybody else. <laughs> what would you say to the aspiring internal medicine physician right now? Um... It's so worth it. Uh, and always keep, don't, don't become jaded. Um, stay, stay compassionate and empathetic with your patients. Sit with them. Don't be afraid to cry. Um, really just be open and, and with them. What would you say to the aspiring anesthesiologists right now? That we, we have a great field that continues to grow and we will continue to grow. The American Society of Anesthesiology is, is, is a wonderful organization that's looking to the future to continue to build our specialty and to have leadership and to build leadership um, with great opportunities in that and that the operating room is never the same from day to day so if you're looking for a specialty that allows you to go in and if you like neuro if you like you know the neuro cases craniotomies there's neuroanesthesia cardiac anesthesia which is the fellowship so you can take care of those patients that are having open heart surgeries it's a very wide open field and it's not just going in, turning on the anesthesia gas, giving some drugs. It's um, a constant listening and seeing what that patient's doing and adapting to that and really keeping them as stable as possible. And 
I think that's, it's a challenge and we make it look easy some days, but it's a very, you know, obviously is very important. Find what really focus in and hold dear what gives you passion in life and, and what gives you purpose. And through um, whatever hardship that will come um, and, you know, the, the tough situations that, you know, berate you as you go through, you know, learning how to do medicine and practice medicine. I think if you hold on to that kind of stuff so you can, you know, really just have it there to recall quickly and think about it quite often, um, uh, you know, I think you know, it'll help you tremendously. What would you say to the aspiring dermatologist right now? Um, you can do it. <laughs> Work hard. Don't get too stressed. Still have fun. Um, but most importantly, believe in yourself. Um, you can do whatever you set your mind to, so just work hard, yeah. What would you say to the aspiring pediatric physician right now? Um, hmm. I would say um, sometimes, sometimes it can be a thankless job um, sometimes um, we, uh, you know, pediatricians are um, just, we're, we're, we're the, the lowly doctors or, or whatever, um, you know, uh, we're not the, the upper echelon of, of you know, who's, how much people are getting paid or whatever on the pay scale. Um, but life is about way more than that. Um, it's about laying down your lives for others, um, and especially for the vulnerable and the weak, um, you know, and I, I think, you know, children are, are the most vulnerable and the weak, and our job is to take care of children, um, you know, rich and poor and um, of every race, um, and I think sometimes that can be a thankless job, um, but don't be dissuaded or deterred um, because, uh, you know, there's great rewards. Um, certainly, I think, like I said before, I, every day I go to work, I'm, I'm pretty much excited to be there. Um, and I think it's just because there's just new opportunities every day. What would you say to the aspiring ENT physician right now? I would say the future is bright for our specialty. And I say that because there is such a breadth of, of things to do within our specialty, medicine, surgery, uh, the economics of it are fantastic because you are taking care of everybody. And so you get a nice uh, kind of a mutual funds of, of medicine, so to speak, for, for your payer mix. Um, and then you have just so many things being discovered within our specialty and research to be done. And, um, and generally very happy people to be working around. Our, our, like I said, our, my colleagues are, are happy with what they're doing and they're happy to be around and, and uh, a lot of positive energy in our specialty. So, um, so yeah, it's a great field to look into. Highly recommend it and I um, appreciate the opportunity to be able to talk about me and talk about our specialty. What would you say to the aspiring anesthesiologist right now? Wow. I'd say this is a hidden gem in medicine. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, if you have any interest in it, if you want to do it, I say go for it because it's so rewarding. What would you say to the aspiring urologist right now? Hang in there. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. You'll enjoy it. Even here I am decades into it and still love it every day. What would you say to the aspiring radiologist or interventional radiologist right now? It's a long road, but now that I'm on the other side, it is 100% worth it. What would you say to the aspiring OB physician right now? You can do it. Um, it's a difficult road. It's a hard road. Um, you'll question if it's worth it, and only you will know the answer to that, but there's no doubt in my mind that you have what it takes. What would you say to the aspiring neurologist right now? Um, I would say be interested and stay engaged. Um, they've done a lot of studies that the more curious you are, um, the more wise you will be. Um, don't have a fixed mindset. Um, continue to grow and the more intellectually curious you are, the more you're gonna learn and absorb like a sponge. And that is what makes the best type of neurologist. What would you say to the aspiring pathologist right now? 
that you can do this. Uh, pathology, uh, when you first start it as a resident, feels like you're like drinking from a fire hose because in medical school you don't really learn applied pathology. You learn how to be a pediatrician or a family medicine doctor or an internist or a surgeon if that's the rotations you picked. But um, you didn't really learn to be a pathologist. So if you're early on in your pathology career and you feel like you're never going to learn all this stuff, you have no idea what CD5 is versus CD3 and what the, uh, the PNET acronym means, don't worry. We've all been there. You're going to get where you need to get. Take it one day at a time, one diagnosis at a time. If there's someone on the other side of the screen really wanting to be an infectious disease doctor, what are some words of encouragement you would give them? Uh, first of all, just uh, pray about it and uh, keep, your, keep your interest up, but take it a day at a time. Don't try to make up your mind for the future five years. Is do the best job with today that you possibly can, because you might not live that long anyway. So make each day count, and so you can look back and say to yourself, you know, I did a pretty decent job today. If, if I wake up tomorrow, I'll do some more of the same. But so in other words, don't have too many long-term goals. As it says in Scripture, sufficient for the day is the evil therein. Uh, and so do the best job you can with today and let tomorrow take care of itself. That's a good question too. I feel like I've been saying that a lot, but I think it's really important if you're interested in GI just to recognize that it's going to be a long haul and to focus on each step of the way. If you're a med student, focus on learning as much as you can about medicine overall while focusing um, in GI, learning more about GI. And then you have to do your internal medicine training. That's one of the unique things about doing GI, for example. You do three years of being a doctor that's not specific to GI, so making sure you're the best internist you can be at that point, and then focusing your attention on GI once, once you get there. Um, I think people can get burnt out or overly anxious if they're trying to essentially become a GI doctor too soon. I think taking each thing um, in its due time will help you get there and will ease your mind quite a bit. Let's say believe in yourself. Make sure you're doing it for the right reasons and then just believe in yourself. Um, there's always going to be negative kind of news and people telling you medicine's not worth it and there's not going to be jobs and all of these other sorts of problems and just remember that there's always going to be a need for doctors and things are going to go through ebb and flow, ups and downs, salaries are going to change and all of these things but at the end of the day what you do is you get to help people and that's across medicine and especially in emergency medicine you get to help everyone, people that you know are on one end of the spectrum of socioeconomic in a bad situation that are maybe homeless and have nowhere else to go and you're also going to help you know the ultra rich occasionally who are in a you know severe bind and so you you see all walks of life and you get to help everybody equally it's very rewarding and so just know that the work that you put in is worth it and you will help people and you know all it takes is that one that one patient who says thank you who literally thanks you directly for for what you've done for your care um, that's all it takes to, to know that it's worth it. What would you say to the aspiring psychiatrist right now? That's a great question. Protect your mental health. Protect your mental health at all costs. If that means stepping away from something for a little bit, if that means letting someone down, if that means not going out to some party or some vacation or something because you need to protect your mental health, do it. That, protecting your mental health, in my opinion, is like number one priority. This doesn't even go for people that are just interested in psychiatry, but especially for these people because you're going to be in a field where you're dealing with some of the most traumatic experiences in all of medicine. Medicine is a traumatic field, but psychiatry in particular is so traumatic. You gotta protect yourself or you won't be able to protect anybody else. Finally, what would you say to the aspiring orthopedic surgeon right now? Um, you know, it, it's a hard road. I'd be dishonest if I told you that, if I, if I said anything different about that. Um, but I think, Uh, the best, my favorite analogy, I guess, is when I think about where I am now versus, you know, and, and think about thinking about the past. 
is really like a diamond and, and what diamonds are formed from, right? Like it's, it takes a lot of, um, a lot of hard work to get here. Um, but, and, and you will, you will meet a lot of detractors ac ac along the way who tell you that you're not good enough. There may be times where you feel, um, that you don't belong. Um, but if you, if you maintain that passion for orthopedics and it is what you want to do, don't let anything deter you and continue along that path. It's a hard road, but it's worth it. What would you say to the aspiring neurosurgeon right now? I would say, you know, commit to your dream, push through the hard work, and, uh, and don't be afraid to fail. You know, it's, it's a difficult specialty, but when you reach the end, it's, it's incredible. It's absolutely worth it. What would you say to the aspiring osteopathic medical student right now? Um, don't compare yourself. And I know everybody says that, and it's super cheesy, but everyone's journey is different. Like, your skills and your set of expertise or whatever, like, that's different and unique to you, so you shouldn't compare yourself. Even if like other people are applying now, maybe it's not the right time for you, you know? Things like that.